In the realm of tempests, many great rivers cross the vast landscapes, separating villages and continents alike. The efforts to cross these great obstacles have been everything from successful to downright disastrous. The most notable of these efforts took place in the northern reaches of the realm, on the borders of two vastly different, one might say opposing, patches of wilderness. It had of course been noticed in the upper echelons of the fort, a group any normal dwarf would describe as patently insane, that the parched soil on the western reach was of particular interest, always returning to twisted animation in a creature's body, or even just its parts. The first warning should have been when the giant lorikeet bank price was struck down, dashed into the river. This act was never forgiven, as the vengeance of his mate was an unforgettably grim tiding of things to come. As Udil's bones and the cloth of his shirt were tucked into the branches, the mournful squawking of Killer Spiral the giant lorikeet from atop her new nest should have given the dwarves some indication of the horrors that their dark plan would inevitably bring. A cult of macabre immortality rose, constructing on the hallowed ground a great altar, where followers would regularly meet to conduct sinister rituals. Despite this, most of the fortress carried on about this business, as a rising state of general excitement about what some were already calling the greatest festival ever prevented most dwarves from even really noticing the goings-on over in the southwest field. An archer squad was arranged to strike down Killer Spiraled, and three dwarves set forth wielding crossbows made from the bones of the great bird's mate in retaliation for what was done to Udil. The giant lorikeet met her doom by the southern path, and the fortress dwarves breathed a sigh of relief as the aerial menace was no more. Down in the mines, where the walls are hot from the veins of the magma sea, ancient horrors clashed with dwarven will. Brought forth from the darkness, a material not hence seen in the world was cast into the great forges. The festival began, the minting of the year 69 divine black metal coins of Seral Nidos kicking off the celebrations in the river fortress. Lavish roasts and liquid sunshine brewed from the magical berries of the eastern forest were served, a brew fondly recounted across the lands in later years by the few that remembered what happened next. The rumors surrounding the details of the incident vary, with many disagreements on who first saw the unicorns on the northern slope. Some say it was the rangers, some the herbalists, while others claim they were first seen from the fortress boardwalk. Whatever the case, all accounts agree that it all began when a dwarf got too close. In the blink of an eye, the dwarf was skewered, and even as nearby dwarves started killing unicorns in retaliation, the cult sprang into action. As the dust of the fighting settled, three unicorns lay fallen, their bodies were seized. Cultists were seen capturing one unicorn alive, taking it to a strange building on the river west of the fortress while others yet took one of the fallen to the dark altar in the field. Above the cheers of the fort celebrations, the unnoticed chanting gave way to abrupt screams. Have you ever seen a unicorn? It is said that their hooves shine like nacre, their horns opalescent. Many a dwarf has gone mad gazing into the pure gold of their eyes, their silken hair shimmering with more light than shines upon it. Those that left the meeting call to find the source of the screams found themselves faced by a dark perversion of that once noble creature. Its prior majesty had given way to a sickening famine of every feature, the still shrinking flesh of undeath cracking and oozing warped silver blood. Most could only recognize the carnage already dripping from its horn as the deranged corpse tore its way through the cult and towards the fort. An immediate alarm brought armed fortress dwarves to the fight, but as the forces reached the field they realized in horror, even as the skeleton of the dark beast was struck down, that the bodies of each fallen dwarf would continue to shudder and rise with an unnatural strength and fervor. The soil of the tainted field ran red. Out on the river, the ritual's completion was observed by the remaining cultists eagerly, with no time being wasted as their true objective neared finality. A cage was brought to the meeting hall, and as the terrified cries of the partygoers rose, the great terrarium in the center was filled with the cult's symbol of death itself. Accounts differ surrounding what happened next, with some saying a curse brought the fall, while others say it was a beast from the deep. Others still insisting it was the dark cult capturing dwarves for their dark rituals. Whatever the case, most will claim that a monster still resides in that fortress by a parched field along with a treasure of untold wealth from an unforgettable year at Sazir Dusim Rakust Ushul. Bridgework, the Tomb of Realms. 
Thank you so much for stopping by Kairok Mesh, the Realm of Tempests. I've been your host, Wyvern Rider, and I hope you might subscribe for the next one and come see me on stream. Links in the mines below.